Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. In this one we're going to be looking at uh, gears again. A little bit of basic theory and how they work and maybe even get on to making one. Gears, believe it or not, have been around for thousands of years, literally longer than you'd really think because the basic concepts are quite basic. Now in the uh, way back about 3,000 years, 3,500 years ago in China they had um, to crush stuff like rock or your finger here and they had like a hammer, a heavy weight like a rock or a something there with some rock to, to, to crush here and they were able to automate that by making a water wheel out of a tree trunk with some branches sticking out and they even were able to put those in and a water wheel dipped into water here. They probably started with a water wheel like this that would just stick through a branch and the water would come along and push that to make it the tree trunk turn. But they got a little bit more sophisticated and got to here and then eventually they could line up that hammer here, the lever onto the branch so that when the water pushed the wheel the, uh, the log would turn and the branches came around to make that hammer rise and fall to then do an automated crushing plant 24 hours a day to take that manual labour out of it. That was sort of the first gears, just this sort of thing here. I think they figured out that you could, could get, if you timed it properly, you could get one stick pushing another stick in a continual mo motion and then instead of making a hammer go up and down, you could get something else to also move around. I'm sure they figured out that you could have either sticks poking outwards and coordinated or you could even have them standing up coordinated. If we take a step back and go right back to basic theory, the minimum you're going to need is a, a, a two wheels that are going to, at least by friction, one rub on the other and one will move the other. That's the bare minimum before we get to teeth. So the minimum that we're going to need is at least the two wheels touching each other and through friction at this contact point the energy from this one rotationally transfers to the other one and moves it around as well through this friction point. Now at this point we can start to play with maths by varying the sizes of those circles. If this one has twice the circumference of this one, every one time that this goes around this one will go twice. So this way we can start playing with ratios mathematically. In order for the mathematics of the size and ratios to work and for the teeth to mesh, the most important thing in a gear is the size of the, this circle here that, that makes the point of contact and therefore the circumference of the circle. That is the most important part apart from the central point which gives you rotation. The circumference is the most important measurement that you can need to look at. Now thousands of years ago the Chinese were smart enough to be able to actually measure the distances between their cities. They had a horse drawn cart here with a wheel of a certain diameter which then had a a gear inside which would then activate another gear, do that mathematics so that every so many meters a lever was pushed and a hammer hit a bell and that bell they would count the number of bells and then do maths to figure out how many meters it was between one city to another. That was one of the very earliest or a good example of an early application of that math. Now at some point the friction at this point is not going to be enough to hold them steady and they're going to slip because of the forces involved. So you're going to have to start making a, teeth, a tooth coming out. And because you make a tooth coming out on the other one you've got to make a indent 
a valley for that to go into so that this point of contact here still remains the same and the opposite will happen that you will make a tooth from the other one and a valley of the other and that's how you start getting your teeth but it's this point that still remains very critical so now we can start figuring out some math here if I have a circumference say of 100 centimeters here we can make a tooth that is one centimeter wide that means that we can have uh, one tooth that goes out and then the valley for the op opposing tooth that means you're going to have two centimeters divide that so you're going to have room for 50 teeth on that circle there at one centimeter wide now we can go in the opposite direction and decide how many teeth we're going to want say for example if we want 24 teeth uh, and we want to make them at we just decide one centimeter for example that means we're going to need a, a tooth and a valley so that means we're going to have 48 segments because it's one centimeter wide per segment and that means we're going to have 48 centimeters in circumference now to find the diameter we're going to have to times that by pi which is 3.14 uh, which is close enough for us here and that's going to give us 150.72 centimeters in diameter and to get the radius divide that by 2 and we're going to get 75 0.36 centimeters as that radius so that we know that distance there to maintain that critical distance and size of that circle. Now if we were doing high grade precision engineering for an engine or something like that we would use micrometers and all sorts of very fine instruments and degrees and all the rest of it with lathes and such like but we're doing this in wood so let's just do it eyeballed a bit. The easiest division that you can do of your circle is in half and then once again you can basically uh, divide that with a compass into quarters. At the smallest number of teeth they generally use is six teeth but it is easy for our application here just to go with your compass again divide that in half again to give you quarters and that's going to give us divide it again into eight teeth Divide those ones again, and you're getting 16 teeth. And then to 64 and 28. Remembering you're going to need double the number per teeth that you have. So 16 segments is going to be only 8 teeth. And divide that again. Is going to give you 32 segments, therefore 16 teeth. Then we can decide on the width of our tooth. If we were to go one centimeter, we can measure in and go out, out, out until we've got a measure to there at one centimeter. And then I know that I can now do my radius here at one centimeter. That will be our one centimeter. Now the height of the tooth, uh, uh, it has to clear the valley. So, and we have to have a valley deep enough to take that tooth. So it's going to be like that. Now this, this critical circle, they generally call the pitch, the circle pitch. And because you're going to add a tooth, they call that the addendum. And 
going to take away is just the addendum. So this is the addendum and the addendum and the pitch. Uh, you need a, the, the height of that can be anything more than that can be sh chopped off here or the longest you want it is probably from a point here on a circle it's going to give you a curve this way and from the opposite direction the other way and therefore the addendum is going to be exactly the same height as the the addendum but in negative so I can now draw a circle at the tip of the addendum to find out my outer circumference of the circle I want to cut and then also my addendum as to how low those are going to go in. Now the points of those are not quite as critical as the, uh, the pitch. Uh, 2,000 years ago and even more, they made small cogs out of bronze with just a triangular file. So those uh, became basically just a triangle like that. Um, in clockworks, it's easier just to file out a square base to that with a, a, a square file there in the dendum. And you can even, and if you were to use a drill bit, you could mark a center there and just drill a circle so that you would get a circular or a half circle at the base of that. Similarly, you could have it either uh, chopped off at a shorter distance, you could have that curved in with a flat base and others, and you could also make that circular as well. So that circle can fit into that circle. With a peg gear, we have basically found our pitch circle or diameter, which is there, and then right on it, we have divided it so that the peg width is exactly the same as the gap width. And that's there. So on here, you would basically find your pitch, which is there, pitch diameter, and you're going to make a peg, and then a gap, and then another peg. And drill your holes at those centers there. At that center there. If you're doing your gear in something like PVC, plastic metal or whatever, or even ply or conglomerate, you're just going to go flat. But if you're going to do it in wood, you've got to take the grain of the wood into consideration. You can't have grains going across the teeth or the teeth will snap off. So wherever possible, have your grain going outwards. And in the next video, I think we'll do that. We'll make one like this with eight segments, three teeth per segment.